new book imagines the life of an ageing Russian leader 20 years from now. He's eight years out of office, surrounded by a coterie of dishonest individuals taking advantage and skimming money off him. The book is called The Senility of Vladimir P and its author Michael Honig joins me now. Lovely to have you here on Showcase. People are inevitably going to draw comparisons and imagine that you're talking about the current Russian president. Was that in your thinking when you wrote it? Presumably, yes. Um, it's up to people to judge that for themselves, I guess, but uh, there are a lot of parallels, I would say, yeah. Right. So how do you imagine life for this ageing Russian former president? The life I envisage in the book is one in which he, he's become demented um, and he's been kind of put out of the way into a dasha, into a, a villa outside Moscow where he's surrounded by... Um, a bunch of people who are supposedly looking after him, but actually are skimming as much money from him and his estate as they possibly can. You say people can draw their own comparisons, but you could have written this um, description in order for people to draw comparisons with other world <laughs> leaders. Why did you particularly set it in Russia? Well, something extraordinary is happening in Russia today. Um, over the last 15 years, it was a country which could have become democratic, could have had the rule of law could have had freedom of expression. And, and one man and a very small group of cronies that came to Moscow from St. Petersburg with him have, have hijacked the country and have turned the state into uh, an organised crime syndicate. And it, it's an extraordinary thing that's happened. And it, it kind of, it's such a powerful thing that I wanted to somehow do something about it, have my say, I guess, about it and, and uh, talk about it. Mm. I mean, it's something that the, the Russian administration would deny. Have you had sure. any feedback? Do they know that you've written this book? <laughs> Not yet. I mean, the book's just come out. Uh -huh. But, you know, a lot of people looked at it and said to me, uh, you, you can't write this kind of thing and you can't draw such a close parallel with Vladimir Putin as I have. It's disrespectful. It, it's, and, you know, but, you know, the things that he's done, he's done are so so appalling in so many ways that uh, I think uh, one, one can say whatever one wants about him, really. It's been described, your book, as tragicomic, and there are mm. some very funny moments in it. Mm -hmm. uh, given that you have based it on the life of, of Vladimir Putin, yeah. how easy was he to take off? He, I mean, at one level, Putin comes across to us as a buffoon. He's uh, full of machismo. He, um, he lies openly. There's nothing that is too blatant for him not to do. And yet at another level, he's insidious and dangerous and probably one of the most dangerous men in the world. So the book is a tragic comedy because what's happening in Russia today is, is so tragic and yet at the same time so absurd that it lends itself to tragic comedy. And, and Putin is a, is a, is a double-faced character. He's, he's a buffoon and yet at the same time extraordinarily dangerous. All the people around him in the book are largely dishonest chances, aren't mm. they? And, and they take advantage of him now that he yeah. is senile. Yeah. Um, what point are you trying to make there about society generally, all these people who perhaps started off yeah. being quite good but then get their heads turned yeah. by money and power? I guess what I wanted to try to do was to draw a picture of what Putin and his administration have done to Russia. I mean, that's really the great tragedy that's happened, that they have taken this country and turned it and, and pushed it in such a, a direct, such a bad direction. And I wanted to, to draw a picture of that, a microcosm of that, if you like. So Putin is, is in this villa surrounded by these people and they are doing to him what he's doing to Russia today. Yeah. Very briefly, if you would, yeah. you're formerly a doctor. Yeah. You paint a very vivid portrayal of what happens when, when you become senile. Was that something mm. you always wanted to do when you were a doctor, thinking about writing, that you wanted to write something medical? Um, no, I mean, I have written... A, a, my first book was a, a black medical comedy. Um, but, uh, no, I didn't particularly want to focus on dementia. It just seemed the right kind of setting in which to, to, to capture the issues. OK, well, it's a fascinating read. Michael Honig, thanks so much for coming on to talk to us about it. Thank you.